What happens when the world's most powerful navy admits its frontline warships can't handle the future? January 2025, Surface Navy Association Symposium. The latest DDGX rendering drops on screens across the defense community. Five inch deck gun, gone. VLS layout, reconfigured. The message from NAVCA, we're not building another destroyer. We're building something that can survive what's coming. January 14th, 2025. PEO Ships releases updated DDGX concept. Lead procurement, fiscal year 2032. All 22 Ticonderoga cruisers retired by 2027. Earliest Burks pushing fifth decade. Hulls at absolute limits of space, weight, power, cooling. Flight three Burks maxed out. Zero margin for directed energy. Zero space for hypersonics. Meanwhile, China operates eight Type 055 destroyers, 13,000 tons, 112 VLS cells. Capability gap measurable and widening. The strategic stakes are existential. Pacific conflict scenarios, DF-21, D and DF-26 ballistic missiles, supersonic YJ-18 cruise missiles, layered defenses designed to blunt American power projection. Navy's answer requires a warship that doesn't exist. DDGX is the bet that clean sheet design restores dominance. If costs spiral like Zumwalt or requirements creep like LCS, the Navy enters the 2030s with a fleet designed for the last war. Consequence, strategic irrelevance in Indo-Pacific. DDGX is 14,500 tons architected around the integrated power system a floating power plant generating electricity first, then allocating dynamically to propulsion, sensors, or weapons. Gas turbines, likely GEMT-30s or Rolls-Royce derivatives, produce tens of megawatts, enabling capabilities impossible on current destroyers. High power directed energy weapons. The AN-SPY-6V1 radar from Lockheed Martin's Aegis Baseline 10 Magazine 96MK41 VLS cells from BAE systems for SM6, Tomahawks and ESSM Block 2, plus 12 large diameter tubes, 87 inches, for conventional prompt strike hypersonics. Same Northrop Grumman weapon going on Zumwalt, capable of Mach 5 plus hitting targets 1500 miles inland. Two ram launchers with 21 cells each. Range jumps 50 to 120% over current destroyers. Clean angular hull form reduces radar signature while maintaining Pacific seakeeping. China's naval modernization accelerates with purpose. The Type 055 Renhai class, eight commissioned since 2020, more under construction at Dalian and Jiangnan. Displacement, 12 to 13,000 tons. VLS. 112 cells accommodating HHQ, 9B air defense missiles, and YJ-18 supersonic anti-ship missiles with 300-kilometer range. Magazine capacity exceeds retiring Ticonderoga cruisers. Those VLS cells are larger than USMK-41, potentially housing future hypersonics China aggressively develops. Dark Sword and GJ-11 stealth drones FH-97 Loyal Wingman. Beijing's integrating autonomous systems faster than US acquisition responds. Russia adds S-70 Okotnik strike drones and Zircon hypersonics at Mach 8 plus. DDG open parenthesis. X close parenthesis is designed to overmatch these specific threats. High power radar tracks hypersonics. Directed energy defeats drone swarms. CPS hypersonics provide standoff strike. Rear Admiral Fred Pyle, we need a stick that beats our adversaries. DDGX is that stick. Taiwan Strait, 2038. Dark ocean, thick clouds. A DDGX as air warfare commander picks up electromagnetic signatures. Chinese destroyers maneuvering beyond the horizon. Tactical picture builds through network fusion. Satellite data, P-8 Poseidon tracks, Submarine SIGINT, threat board erupts, 40 YJ-18 supersonic missiles inbound at Mark III, 3 DF-21D ballistic missiles arcing through stratosphere, 
maneuverable warheads adjusting in real time. Saturation attack Beijing has drilled for years. Outer layer engages, SM3, Block YA interceptors kill ballistic threats. SM6 dual role missiles take cruise missiles at 60 miles. But missile math is unforgiving. Finite VLS cells versus attack designed to exhaust them. Leakers penetrate to 20 miles. DDGX's design philosophy proves itself. High energy lasers powered by IPS electrical reserves engage. Target lock on YJ18. Seven seconds. Seeker dome ablates. Guidance fails, threat tumbles, another laser fires. Cost, $5 versus $2 million for SM6. Standard missile magazine stays full. EW spoofs remaining seekers. Ram wall of interceptors. Carrier emerges unscathed. DDGX proved its rationale in 90 seconds. But can kinetic defeat kinetic? YJ18 terminal sprint at Mach 3. One kilometer per second. 20 seconds from horizon to impact. SM6 and ESSM Block 2 provide intercept capability, but each engagement burns a $2 million missile against $500,000 threat. Lasers change calculus, infinite shots limited by thermal management and power. But physics remains. Atmospheric absorption in humid maritime environments, targeting fast maneuvering threats, demands perfect beam control. Analysts debate whether 150 kilowatt lasers pack sufficient power for hardened missiles. Lockheed and Northrop develop 300 plus kilowatt systems, but they're not deployment ready. Navy bets DDGX's margins can scale as laser tech matures. Calculated risk, not guaranteed solution. Alternative, relying solely on kinetic interceptors against saturation is math the Navy can't win. Program origin, acquisition discipline after CGX cancellation in 2010, and Zumwalt truncation to three ships at $8 billion each. DDGX office established 2021 with CNO Admiral Gilday's directive. Navy leads design in-house through NAVCA. Industry provides producibility input from day one. Gibbs and Cox, Bath Iron Works Maine, and Ingalls Shipbuilding Mississippi embedded from concept phase. Goal, 80% design maturity before cutting steel, following Columbia SSBN model. Philadelphia land-based facilities run full IPS prototypes now. Turbines, generators, electric drives, power management. Validated on shore before first hull. FY 2025 budget, 153.5 million for R&D. Milestones, April 2024. IPS component integration. October 2025, full load electrical trials. First ship procurement, fiscal year 2032. Lead delivery 2035, IOC 2037. Bath Iron Works, Maine and Ingalls, Pascagoula, Mississippi. 68 Burks built since 1991. As Flight 3 production ends late 2020s, workforce needs continuity. Three year overlap, Final Burks parallel with first DDGX hulls prevents capacity loss. Production sustains 70,000 jobs across shipyards and hundreds of subcontractors, steel mills, turbine manufacturers, radar suppliers, VLS fabricators. Supply chain spans 40 states. Lockheed Martin Moorestown produces Aegis. Raytheon Tucson builds SPY-6. BAE Minneapolis fabricates VLS. Industrial base sustainment at strategic scale. 28 ships over two decades, one to two annually in mid-2030s. DDGX alters naval balance in the Western Pacific. Carrier groups with one or two of these destroyers as air warfare commanders present defensive envelopes. China's anti-access strategy struggles to penetrate. Extended range, 25% fuel efficiency from hull optimization and electric propulsion enables persistent contested water presence without constant logistics. CPS hypersonics provide conventional deterrence against second island chain targets without bomber penetration. This shifts Chinese calculus. But Beijing isn't static. Type 055 production continues. Stretched variants with additional VLS reportedly under development. 
China's shipbuilding tonnage exceeds American and European yards combined. Technology race in directed energy, autonomous systems, hypersonics is global. Russia's Gorshkov frigates carry Zircon. Both nations field point defense lasers. Question isn't whether DDGX provides edge today. It's whether design margins maintain that edge through the 2040s and 2050s. Cost remains critical vulnerability. Congressional Budget Office, January 2025, 4.4 billion per ship, 33% above Navy estimates. Navy argues 3.3 billion assuming economies of scale. History favors CBO pessimism. Zumwalt unit costs exploded when production cut from 32 to three. At Navy's optimistic figure, DDGX costs 50% more than Flight 3 Burke. 28 ships at 4 billion, 112 billion procurement alone before R&D or life cycle costs. Competes with Columbia SSBN, Constellation Frigates, future SSNX, unmanned programs. Congress supportive, adding funding above requests, but sustained support demands hitting milestones without cost growth. Technical risks, IPS unproven at this scale. Hull optimization relies on computational models, not blue water validation. Directed energy integration aspirational, not certified. Scheduled pressure could force compromises. Strategic environment could shift. If China's modernization slows or unmanned systems mature faster, DDGX faces scrutiny as expensive solution to yesterday's problem. Here's the strategic dilemma. The Navy is betting 100 plus billion that large exquisite surface combatants remain relevant in an era of proliferating precision strike, ubiquitous surveillance, and potentially transformative unmanned systems. Is DDGX the right investment or should those resources flow to hundreds of distributed platforms that complicate adversary targeting through mass? Can a $4 billion destroyer justify existence if coordinated drone swarms costing a fraction can mission kill it? Or does naval warfare physics, power generation, magazine depth, sensor aperture, endurance, still demand large hulls only traditional shipyards build? Type your take. Exquisite capability or distributed mass? This is DIB Dispatch, where billion-dollar projects meet battlefield reality.